Your imagination is the gateway to your reality. Neville Goddard Anger, if not restrained, is frequently more hurtful to us than the injury that provokes it. Do not let anyone know what you're doing until it's done. To know what you know and what you do not know, that is true knowledge. Confucius. Trust is easy to build but can be shattered in seconds. When you get tired, learn to rest, not to quit. Discipline starts every day when the first alarm clock goes off in the morning. Jocko Willink. To them that ask thee, where hast thou seen the gods, or how knowest thou certainly that there be gods, that thou art so devout in their worship? I answer first of all, that even to the very eye, they are in some manner visible and apparent. Secondly, neither have I ever seen mine own soul, and yet I respect and honor it. So then for the gods, by the daily experience that I have of their power and providence towards myself and others, I know certainly that they are, and therefore worship them. If it is not right, do not do it. If it is not true, do not say it. If you tell the truth, you don't have to remember anything. The superior man is modest in his speech, but exceeds in his actions. Confucius Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. You act like mortals in all that you fear, and like immortals in all that you desire. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started to be great. Les Brown The flesh receives as unlimited the limits of pleasure, and to provide it requires unlimited time. But the mind, intellectually grasping what the end and limit of the flesh is, and banishing the terrors of the future, procures a complete and perfect life, and we have no longer any need of unlimited time. Nevertheless, the mind does not shun pleasure, and even when circumstances make death imminent, the mind does not lack enjoyment of the best life. Never give up on a dream just because of the time it will take to accomplish it. The time will pass anyway. No one will ever give you love because you want him or her to give it. Real love moves freely in both directions. Don't waste your time on anything else. We must adjust to changing times and still hold to unchanging principles. Jimmy Carter A wise man is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. Life is too short or too long for me to allow myself the luxury of living it so badly. Rich people have small TVs and big libraries, and poor people have small libraries and big TVs. Zig Ziglar Accustom yourself to believing that death is nothing to us, for good and evil imply the capacity for sensation, and death is the privation of all sentience. 
Therefore, a correct understanding that death is nothing to us makes the mortality of life enjoyable, not by adding to life a limitless time, but by taking away the yearning after immortality. For life has no terrors for him who has thoroughly understood that there are no terrors for him in ceasing to live. Foolish, therefore, is the man who says that he fears death, not because it will pain when it comes, but because it pains in the prospect. Whatever causes no annoyance when it is present causes only a groundless pain in the expectation. Death, therefore, the most awful of evils, is nothing to us, seeing that when we are, death is not come, and when death is come, we are not. It is nothing then either to the living or to the dead, for with the living it is not, and the dead exist no longer. No one cares except family. Start saving your money. Don't spend it on homes you can't afford, fancy cars, and running your credit cards to the max. In the end, you'll be much happier. Knowing when to mind your own business and when to speak up is a life lesson that takes time. But once you know when to react or retract, life flows much more smoothly. Loss is nothing else but change, and change is nature's delight. Marcus Aurelius Remember when you wanted what you currently have. There are two ways to live your life. One is as though nothing is a miracle. The other is as though everything is a miracle. You are the witness of all experiences. You are not affected by them. Papa G. Unlimited time and limited time afford an equal amount of pleasure if we measure the limits of that pleasure by reason. Manage your mood because if it does not obey, then it commands. Only those who have a why to live can bear almost anything. It is impossible for someone to learn what they think they already know. Epictetus Do not depend too much on anyone in this world, because even your own shadow leaves you when you are in darkness. Life is a play, it's not the length, but the excellence of the acting that matters. The mind is the most powerful thing in the world. It can work for you or against you. David Goggins Remember that thy mind is of that nature as that it becometh altogether unconquerable. When once recollected in herself, she seeks no other content than this, that she cannot be forced, yea, though it so fall out, that it be even against reason itself, that it cloth bandy. How much less when by the help of reason she is able to judge of things with discretion, and therefore let thy chief fort and place of defense be a mind free from passions, a stronger place, whereunto to make his refuge and so to become impregnable, and better fortified than this hath no man. He that seeth not this is unlearned. He that seeth it and betaketh not himself to this place of refuge is unhappy. Embrace judgment. No matter your outcome, you'll always be judged. So don't live to impress others. Live to impress yourself. He who is wise is content with his lot, whatever it may be, without wishing for what he has not. True wisdom is to understand the eternal nature of the self.
and the impermanence of the material world. Bhagavad Gita It is easy to love your friend, but sometimes the hardest lesson to learn is to love your enemy. You can't litter negativity everywhere and wonder why you have a trashy life. Don't be distracted by criticism. Remember, the only taste of success some people get is to take a bite out of you. Zig Ziglar And remember that philosophy requireth nothing of thee but what thy nature requireth and wouldest thou thyself desire anything that is not according to nature? For which of these sayest thou, that which is according to nature or against it, is of itself more kind and pleasing? Is it not for that respect especially that pleasure itself is to so many men's hurt and overthrow, most prevalent because esteemed commonly most kind and natural? But consider well whether magnanimity rather, and true liberty, and true simplicity, and equanimity, and holiness, whether these be not most kind and natural, and prudency itself, what more kind and amiable than it, when thou shalt truly consider with thyself what it is through all the proper objects of thy rational intellectual faculty currently to go on without any fall or stumble. As for the things of the world, their true nature is in a manner so involved with obscurity that unto many philosophers, and those no mean ones, they seemed altogether incomprehensible, and the Stoics themselves, though they judged them not altogether incomprehensible, yet scarce and not without much difficulty comprehensible, so that all assent of ours is fallible, for who is he that is infallible in his conclusions? From the nature of things, Pass now unto their subjects and matter. How temporary, how vile are they. I such as may be in the power and possession of some abominable loose liver, of some common strumpet, of some notorious oppressor and extortioner. Pass from thence to the dispositions of them that thou doest ordinarily converse with. How hardly do we bear even with the most loving and amiable that I may not say how hard it is for us to bear even with our own selves in such obscurity and impurity of things, in such and so continual a flux both of the substances and time, both of the motions themselves and things moved, what it is that we can fasten upon either to honor and respect especially or seriously and studiously to seek after, I cannot so much as conceive for indeed they are things contrary. When a man does not know what harbor he is making for, no wind is the favorable wind. When you try to please everybody, you almost always please nobody. I have learned that success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome while trying to succeed. Booker T. Washington Poverty is a noose that strangles humility and breeds disrespect for God and man. No work is beneath you. The only thing that should be beneath you is your big ego. Work hard in silence and show your skills at the job you get rather than criticizing the job. Motivation is what gets you started. Habit is what keeps you going. Jim Rohn against a person who showed his partisanship in an unseemly way in a theater, the governor of Epirus having shown his favor to an actor in an unseemly way and being publicly blamed on this account, 
and afterward having reported to Epictetus that he was blamed and that he was vexed at those who blamed him, Epictetus said, What harm have they been doing? These men also were acting as partisans, as you were doing. The governor replied, Does then any person show his partisanship in this way? When they see you, said Epictetus, who are their governor, a friend of Caesar and his deputy, showing partisanship in this way, was it not to be expected that they also should show their partisanship in the same way? For if it is not right to show partisanship in this way, do not do so yourself. And if it is right, why are you angry if they followed your example? For whom have the many to imitate except you, who are their superiors? To whose example should they look when they go to the theater except yours? See how the deputy of Caesar looks on. He has cried out, and I too then will cry out. He springs up from his seat, and I will spring up. His slaves sit in various parts of the theater and call out, I have no slaves, but I will myself cry out as much as I can, and as loud as all of them together. You ought then to know when you enter the theater that you enter as a rule and example to the rest how they ought to look at the acting. Why then did they blame you? Because every man hates that which is a hindrance to him. They wished one person to be crowned. You wished another. They were a hindrance to you and you were a hindrance to them. You were found to be the stronger and they did what they could. They blamed that which hindered them. What then would you have? That you should do what you please and they should not even say what they please. And what is the wonder? Do not the husbandmen abuse Zeus when they are hindered by him? Do not the sailors abuse him? Do they ever cease abusing Caesar? What then does not Zeus know? Is not what is said reported to Caesar? What then does he do? He knows that if he punished all who abuse him, he would have nobody to rule over. What then? When you enter the theater, you ought to say not, let Sophron be crowned, but you ought to say this, come, let me maintain my will in this matter so that it shall be conformable to nature. No man is dearer to me than myself. It would be ridiculous then for me to be hurt, injured, in order that another who is an actor may be crowned. Whom then do I wish to gain the prize? Why the actor who does gain the prize? And so he will always gain the prize whom I wish to gain it. But I wish Sophron to be crowned. Celebrate as many games as you choose in your own house, Nemean, Pythian, Isthmian, Olympian, and proclaim him victor. But in public do not claim more than your due nor attempt to appropriate to yourself what belongs to all. If you do not consent to this, bear being abused. For when you do the same as the many, you put yourself on the same level with them. Nowhere can man find a quieter or more untroubled retreat than in his own soul. Self-pity is dangerous. Stay away from it. A humble art affords us daily bread, Nero. Live like there's no tomorrow and do what you love. The money will flow. A river cuts through rock not because of its power, but because of its persistence. If you want to be successful, find someone who has achieved the results you want and copy what they do, and you'll achieve the same results. Tony Robbins Against or to those who readily tell their own affairs. When a man has seemed to us to have talked with simplicity about his own affairs, how is it that at last we are ourselves also induced to discover to him our own secrets, and we think this to be candid behavior? 
in the first place, because it seems unfair for a man to have listened to the affairs of his neighbor and not to communicate to him also in turn our own affairs. Next, because we think that we shall not present to them the appearance of candid men when we are silent about our own affairs. Indeed, men are often accustomed to say, I have told you all my affairs. Will you tell me nothing of your own? Where is this done? Besides, we have also this opinion that we can safely trust him who has already told us his own affairs. For the notion rises in our mind that this man could never divulge our affairs, because he would be cautious that we also should not divulge his. In this way also the incautious are caught by the soldiers at Rome. A soldier sits by you in a common dress and begins to speak ill of Caesar. Then you, as if you had received a pledge of his fidelity by his having begun the abuse, utter yourself also what you think, and then you are carried off in chains. Something of this kind happens to us generally. Now as this man has confidently entrusted his affairs to me, shall I also do so to any man whom I meet? For when I have heard, I keep silence if I am of such a disposition, but he goes forth and tells all men what he has heard. Then if I hear what has been done, if I be a man like him, I resolve to be revenged. I divulge what he has told me. I both disturb others and am disturbed myself. But if I remember that one man does not injure another, and that every man's acts injure and profit him, I secure this, that I do not anything like him. But still I suffer what I do suffer through my own silly talk. True. But it is unfair when you have heard the secrets of your neighbor for you in turn to communicate nothing to him. Did I ask you for your secrets, my man? Did you communicate your affairs on certain terms, that you should in return hear mine also? If you are a babbler and think that all who meet you are friends, do you wish me also to be like you? But why, if you did well in entrusting your affairs to me, and it is not well for me to entrust mine to you, do you wish me to be so rash? It is just the same as if I had a cask which is watertight, and you one with a hole in it, and you should come and deposit with me your wine that I might put it into my cask, and then should complain that I also did not entrust my wine to you, for you have a cask with a hole in it. How then is there any equality here? You entrusted your affairs to a man who is faithful and modest, to a man who thinks that his own actions alone are injurious and useful, and that nothing external is. Would you have me entrust mine to you, a man who has dishonored his own faculty of will, and who wishes to gain some small bit of money or some office or promotion in the court, even if you should be going to murder your own children like Medea? Where is this equality? But show yourself to me to be faithful, modest and steady. Show me that you have friendly opinions. Show that your cask has no hole in it, and you will see how I shall not wait for you to trust me with your affairs. But I myself shall come to you and ask you to hear mine. For who does not choose to make use of a good vessel? Who does not value a benevolent and faithful adviser? Who will not willingly receive a man who is ready to bear a share, as we may say, of the difficulty of his circumstances, and by this very act to ease the burden by taking a part of it? True, but I trust you. You do not trust me. In the first place, not even do you trust me. But you are a babbler, and for this reason you cannot hold anything. For indeed, if it is true that you trust me, trust your affairs to me only. But now, whenever you see a man at leisure, you seat yourself by him and say, Brother, I have no friend more benevolent than you nor dearer. I request you to listen to my affairs. And you do this even to those who are not known to you at all. But if you really trust me, it is plain that you trust me because I am faithful and modest, not because I have told my affairs to you. 
Allow me then to have the same opinion about you. Show me that, if one man tells his affairs to another, he who tells them is faithful and modest. For if this were so, I would go about and tell my affairs to every man, if that would make me faithful and modest. But the thing is not so, and it requires no common opinions. If, then, you see a man who is busy about things not dependent on his will and subjecting his will to them, you must know that this man has ten thousand persons to compel and hinder him. He has no need of pitch or the wheel to compel him to declare what he knows, but a little girl's nod, if it should so happen, will move him. The blandishment of one who belongs to Caesar's court, desire of a magistracy or of an inheritance, and things without end of that sort. You must remember then, among general principles, that secret discourses require fidelity and corresponding opinions. But where can we now find these easily? Or if you cannot answer that question, let someone point out to me a man who can say, I care only about the things which are my own, the things which are not subject to hindrance, the things which are by nature free, this I hold to be the nature of the good. But let all other things be as they are allowed. I do not concern myself. Don't tell your problems to everyone. 80% don't care, and the other 20% are glad you have them. Even the smallest lie can break the biggest trust. If you light a lamp for someone else, it will also brighten your path, Buddha. Realize you cannot control everything or everyone, but you can control yourself, and that's even better. Everything is going to be all right. Maybe not today, but eventually. We are here to awaken from our illusion of separateness. Tishnat Han. To a reasonable creature, the same action is both according to nature and according to reason. It is not your fault things are the way they are. Men cheat because they don't feel needed. Women, because they don't feel loved. Everything hangs on one's thinking. A man is as unhappy as he has convinced himself he is. Seneca. No matter how many times I may stumble, I will rise each time a better man. When I free myself from who I am, I become who I can be. Know that life can only be found in the present moment, Tishnat Han. If you undertake a role that is beyond your capacities, you both disgrace yourself in that one, and also fail in the role that you might have filled successfully. Making mistakes is better than faking perfection. True happiness is to enjoy the present without anxious dependence upon the future. For we are made for cooperation. Marcus Aurelius Never compare yourself to others. No one can play your role better than you. Close some doors today, not because of pride, incapacity, or arrogance, but simply because they lead you nowhere.
Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. Tony Robbins